chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. I'll not keep us long because I can smell the smell already starting. That's oil on my fingers, I guess. That's not barbecue. <laughs> Amen. The Lord is so good. Amen. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold! Are not all of these which speak Galileans? And here we, every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born. I want to talk to you for just a few minutes on the subject of the day of Pentecost. God bless you. You may be seated. When God makes a promise, we can count on Him to bring it to pass because God is a little different than I am or like a lot of us are. He always, He always fulfills His promise. And throughout the Old Testament, it is riddled with passages of Scripture where the Lord was promising them of something greater to come. He was telling them of things to come and telling them what was going on, but none of God's promises were greater and none of them were more desperately needed than His promise to pour out His Spirit upon all of humankind. It's possible that people of that era did not even know what a great promise it was that they had. They didn't realize the vastness of it or how powerful it was. And they, they, they didn't know and, and, and they didn't understand a lot of what was going on. They probably had very little comprehension about what it meant. It's kind of like uh, when we talk about the, uh, the flood getting ready to come down and, and Noah began to preach that it was going to rain. Well, if you've never seen rain... How would you know what rain was going to be like? How could you get excited about it if you'd never seen it? And when they prophesied about upon them all flesh I will pour out of my spirit, how did they understand it? Or they, they probably didn't have a lot of comprehension of what it really meant and, and how it would change their lives or how glorious it would be to have that promise fulfilled in your own life. They didn't understand how it would change people's lives and how glorious it would be and, and, it would, and, and how powerful it would be to just to have this promise fulfilled and to have this source of strength and this, this spiritual power. It's a victory that, 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 that a human ever, more power than a human could ever expect to experience is to have the Spirit of God dwelling on the inside of them. Unfortunately for the prophets of the Old Testament, they got to talk about it, but they never got to see it. They, they got to talk about it coming, but they never got to have it. They prophesied the coming of the Spirit and how it would indwell us and how it would be a new era of time, but they, they never got to experience it for their own. And the people to whom they prophesied, they would not even experience it. And I've often thought of that as I'm reading my Bible and they prophesy and I'm reading the prophets and they, they, they say, this is going to happen and this is going to happen, but they never say when. They never say, you know, once in a while they'll put a time on it, but a lot of times they'll say, and God said He's going to do this and God said he's going to do that. And you know, we, we live in such a hurried up world today. We put credence on how quickly somebody's word is fulfilled. If somebody says, I believe God's going to do this for us, he better do it by Thursday or we label him a false prophet. Well, they prophesied and said, God was going to do this for me. It's Tuesday morning. Ain't nothing happened yet. When did God say He's going to do it? Well, He didn't say. He just said He was. Well, if it's really of God, then He's really going to do it. And then the prophets never got to experience it. And the people they prophesied to never even got to. And here's the interesting part. Even the angels, even the angels, were destined to curiously look on those who would receive the Holy Ghost, for it was a privilege. This baptism of the Holy Ghost was a privilege reserved only for humans. Angels never even got to receive the Holy Ghost. Oh, I want to be an angel, not me. I got something better than being an angel. I got, I got God's Spirit dwelling on the inside of me. But you know... Uh, 
you say, prove that, Pastor. Okay, First Peter chapter 1. This is not on the screen, but I'll read it to you, 10 through 12. Of which salvation the prophets had inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the suffering of Christ and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us. In other words, the prophets didn't even get to experience, but unto us they did minister these things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven which things the angels desired to look into. In other words, the angels said, I'd like to have some of that. You want to know what the archangels of heaven are thinking? They're thinking, I'd like to have some of that Holy Ghost. They're looking into that. I'd like to have some of that. But it's not designed for an angel. God designed it for us. He said, this is for humans only. Those of us living in the present day are our most privileged people because privileged to experience the salvation of the Lord by receiving His Spirit on the inside of us, accompanied by the sign of speaking in other tongues. Somebody said amen. I think when, there's, when we look at our world today, the Lord poured out His Spirit back on the day of Pentecost. But when we look at our world today, and, and I want to say this kindly, but there's everything under the sun out there that calls themselves Pentecost. I mean, there's everything. There's, there's all kind. We lived in East Tennessee, and I don't mind telling you this. We lived, I'm not bragging about living in East Tennessee. I'm just saying I don't mind telling you that we did, you know. It wasn't that big a deal. Uh, <laughs> was it, hon? Wasn't no big deal, was it, to live in East Tennessee? No, okay. But <laughs> we didn't. I want to make sure it just wasn't me. <laughs> but but we, were, we didn't even put Pentecost on our churches because there were so many things in the Appalachia world that, that called themselves Pentecost. That's where all your snake handlers, if you called yourself Pentecost, they literally came to your church expecting to see you have a box of rattlesnakes. That's just not a funny story in a song. That was a reality. And you get up into Appalachia, and you get up into that area, and they really did that. And those preachers would get to shouting and dancing, and they'd, they'd reach in a big old box and lift the lid. And then the more faith they had, the bigger one they grabbed. Ha, 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 ha. Not me. I'm sorry. Sorry, I, I don't interpret that scripture to mean that because I can't see where Peter had a box of snakes that he took around. I don't see where Paul said, bring out the snakes. He said, well, Jesus said you could pick up any snake. He's talking in a spiritual realm there where you can walk into a room full of devils and you can do what you got to do and it won't affect you. And you can absorb any, you can go into a room full of poison and, and people have every poison spirit under the sun and it's not going to affect you if you got the Holy Ghost. You can walk into a room full of every kind of heathen and devil there is and you can walk right in the midst of it and do what you got to do and if you got the baptism of the Holy Ghost it won't affect you because God protects you from that. And there's everything out there. There's the kind that just sway their arms and people start stacking up like cordwood. There's all kinds of stuff. There's everything under the sun. And they all, but I think what we need to do is we need to do like Jesus taught the, the Jews to search the scriptures. If what we're doing is not scriptural, and why don't we just not call it, we can call it that's what we like, but let's not call it God. Amen. So the rushing mighty wind of the Spirit, the Holy Ghost outpouring, it was scriptural. The Feast of Pentecost was a Jewish feast or celebration under the Old Covenant, which foreshadowed the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. The first fruits of spiritual harvest of believers is the church. And Pentecost was a sacrifice or a feast. They would come together and celebrate the giving of the first fruits. Sometimes it was called the Feast, feast of Weeks, the Feast of the First Fruits, different names. But, but Pentecost means 50th. It was the 50th day. They celebrated it the 50th day after Passover. In our world today, we call Pentecost the 50th day after Easter. And we celebrate that. But when God poured out His Spirit of believers upon the upper room on the day of Pentecost, it was the birth of the New Testament church. That was a good spot for an amen. 
the first fruits of many believers who would be gathered. It was the first fruits. Now let me tell you something. I've got a big old cherry tree in my front yard, and I've been watching all winter wondering if it's ever going to bloom again. Then this spring it bloomed, and then I was afraid it was going to freeze the blooms off, and then it didn't freeze the blooms off, but then, then, it, then it started, they're, they're, they turned, they're, they're green, and they're starting to get a little bit pink, and I look out there. And let me tell you something, folks. When I go out there and I pick the first fruits off of that, and it usually happens when I'm mowing my yard, because I will park my lawnmower underneath the cherry tree, and I'll shut it off, and I'll sit there. And I'll eat until I can't eat no more or reach no more of the ripe ones. And then I'll go in, and when I get in, I'll tell my wife, I'll say, well, the cherries are just about ripe. I tried a few of them. <laughs> but now let me tell you something. Now let me tell you something about this. How, this is a little spiritual application here. People say, well, that's not how we do it today. Do you mean after I get my belly full of cherries, they turn into apricots? They don't turn red anymore. That as soon as I miraculously get in the house and my belly is full of cherries and it's running out the corner of my mouth and I'm about to be sick from eating so many cherries, all of a sudden somebody's going to say, well, now, now those aren't cherries anymore. Those are grapes now. And, and they don't turn red. They turn yellow now because that, that first fruits was just to show you that those were, the, those were the cherries. Not on your life. Every cherry I pick off of there will be red. It'll be tart. It'll be good. It'll have a seed in it. It'll be just like the first one I picked off of there. Don't you understand that the church on the day of Pentecost was the first fruits of the church? And just because the first watermelon out of the patch isn't any different than the last watermelon out of the patch. The first cantaloupe or the first apple is not any different than the last one. If it's an apple tree and the first fruit is an apple, the last fruit will be an apple. Why aren't babies born different naturally now than they was 2,000 years ago? Cows still have calves the way they've always had calves. Horses always have their babies. Dogs have their babies. Humans have their babies. Well, that was what they did back then. But it's different now. Why is it different now? The church was born and told to go forth and reproduce. And when you go forth and reproduce, it comes the same way that the first one came. And we need to understand that Pentecost today is no different than Pentecost was 2,000 years ago. The church is no different now. When God poured out His Spirit on the believers in that upper room, it was the birth of the New Testament church. It was not only scriptural, it was spectacular. It was, spe it was a spectacular beginning for the church. The church just didn't evolve into something, and all of a sudden they realized it was there. When it came forth, man, it came forth powerful. It came forth. 120 was there, and, and, and I like that part of the scripture when it talks about it. It says, on the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Do, let, me, let me explain something. Let's let me pause here, and, and I, I don't want to be a, a downer. On, on this service or anything like that. But do you realize the biggest weapon? You know why there's so many? I hear people, let me, let me gather my thoughts real quick. I've got about three thoughts going right there at one time. Let me, let me gather this real quick. Sometimes I hear people say things like, every time I go to church, it ain't too long you go to church, and before long, there's people starting to not get along. Let me, let me tell you something. If I was Red China and I was going to attack the United States, you know the first thing I'd wipe out would be our nuclear capabilities. Because they're not afraid of, of one little unit of tanks. They can match us with that. So they're going to get you where your strength is. And you go back to the birth of the church. You go back to the birth of the church, and the very first scripture says, they were all in one place, in one accord, one mind, what would happen if you had 75 people, 100 people, 1,000 people, or 20 people, a church of 20? If you had a church of 20 and every one of them was on the same page. I don't care what song you sing, just sing. I don't care who preaches, somebody preach. I don't care what, what, how late we stay just as long as we're there. I don't care what night we have church, let's just have church. Instead of sitting around going, well, I don't like the way this does, or I don't like the way that does, or I don't like the way... How many times have we heard people say, I don't mind going to church, but people get to fight. Did it ever occur to us that that's where our strength lies, is in our unity? That, that that's, where our, that's where we were born? That was the crux that got us born? And if he can cause a little rift, 
If he can get a riff going, praise God, I don't think we have any of that problem. If you have any of that problem here, it's, it's your problem. It's not the church's problem. Because we ain't got none of that going on. Boy, because we're one, we want to be of one mind and one body and one soul and one purpose. We want to stay that because that's where we were born in. That's what we were created in. That's what the, and Satan attacks that kind of stuff. And we need to understand the church was born in that unity and that church was born spiritual and it was born spectacular. It was a spectacular beginning. The day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. And Peter stood up and said, If you want this, you better get it, because in 90 days this goes away. That ain't what he said. Someday there won't be this. No, that ain't what he said. Someday you won't have this experience. No, that ain't what he said. He said, because the promise is unto you and to your children, as many as the Lord our God shall call. Spectacular. Man, he, I, thought, I thought, well, just let David preach a while ago. <laughs> he was talking about the Holy Ghost and, and all of these things. And, and it's exciting because the Lord... The Lord just poured out His Spirit in a time. Now, see, God does. Why didn't He just do it? Here, here's, what, here's what happened. He came in a stable in an obscure way, but when He got ready to birth His church, He put it right smack dab in the middle of the biggest celebration, and, and it wasn't a depressing celebration. It was a celebration. It was a feast. It was a big time. And he did it on the day of Pentecost when the day of Pentecost was fully come. And that when they were all in one place and they were worshiping God and praising God and magnifying God and they were all in one accord. And the Bible says, and then that, that wind began to blow through that place. And it just began to sweep through there. And they began to worship God and God began to fill them with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And they spoke in other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. And that's pretty spectacular. We get all dancy and excited when one person gets the Holy Ghost and receives the baptism of the Holy Ghost speaking other tongues. But can you imagine in a room where there's 120 people and nobody has ever had it? It's like watching rain come for the first time. It never happened before. And all of a sudden we're worshiping God and it just kind of starts like a little fire and it just starts going through there. And as they, one of them begin to get it and somebody else begin to get it and it begin to sweep through there. And before long, every one of them, it filled the house where they were sitting and they begin to worship God and they begin to magnify God. And it got so big and so loud and so, so wild that people come from all over that town in that celebration and they come and they looked in the windows and they looked down the stairs and they, they looked up the stairs and they looked every place that there was and that's where like Brother Hubert was saying a while ago they looked at them and said these people now, now it's got to be pretty spectacular you can't be sitting around singing kumbaya there's got to be some excitement when 120 people get in the Holy Ghost they're not sitting there going mm, pulling their fingers and, mm, and, and let's just all they wasn't doing none of that kind of stuff they was getting so crazy that these people thought they're drunk as he mentioned they're drunk they're, 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 they have, they're tying one on we're having a feast and they rebuked them the people rebuked them see people have always thought that Pentecostal people was getting a little bit too carried away it's because the ones who thinks they're getting the, the church gets too worshipy and too shouty are the ones who have never drank from the wine. There was another good opportunity right there for an amen. How many remember when we used to carry pictures in our billfold? Anybody remember that? I had four or five pictures in my billfold, now I got 2,000 on my phone. And I'm still in the habit of when I take a picture, which ain't, you took a picture of us last week, wasn't it? Last week you took a picture of my wife and I. I said, get another one, get another one. Why? Because I'm old school. In case that one don't turn out. <laughs> we may never get this shot again. <laughs> but we used to carry pictures in our billfold. Remember, we'd open them up and there'd be that plastic thing. Remember that and all of that? And we'd go and we'd see somebody and we'd say, they'd say, How's everybody doing? We'd say, Good. You want you ain't seen my grandkids for a while, have you? And they're thinking, Dear God, here we go. 
You remember that? Some of us older folks. Remember? And they'd pull them out and say, here they was in kindergarten, and look how much she's grown now. Don't she look a lot like me? No, she looks like her mom. No, look. And we'd peel all those pictures out. And you know who would go, oh, dear God, here we go. You know who would do that? The ones that didn't have no pictures in their wallet to show. Because they didn't have no grandkids. They didn't have no kids to show. They didn't have anything to show. But, but it's kind of like, show me yours, I'll show you mine. And so you say, yeah, let me show you what my kids are looking like now. And you start whipping them out and you start showing. You know why some people go, well, you know, uh, I just, no, 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 no. I'll tell you why. It's because they ain't ever drank from the cup. But I want to tell you something. I've drank from the cup. Amen. It was spectacular. It was exciting. It was thriving. It was something that drew their attention. It was not only scriptural and spectacular, but it was spiritual. What exactly happened on the day of Pentecost? What was special about the outpouring of the Spirit on that day? And what did it mean to the church? I'll tell you what it meant. The coming of the Holy Ghost upon the believers, that was the beginning of the church, and the believers were filled with the presence of God as the Spirit moved upon them, and they received the Holy Ghost. It was a spiritual experience that had never before been experienced. All the Bible talks about in Luke chapter 1, I know somebody said, well, Jesus said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. And, and, but this was nothing like what they had received when Jesus talked to them. This was a whole personal and filling. This was a new spiritual experience that transcended anything they had previously ever existed. Jesus telling them to receive the Holy Ghost, they went out and they did things, but this way they received it into their life. Amen. Those who received the spirits experienced a, a, a jubilant ecstasy is about the best way to describe it. They felt it felt good. Now I've seen a lot of people in my life get the Holy Ghost. I've seen hundreds of people get the Holy Ghost. All kinds of people get the Holy Ghost. Young ones, old ones, big ones, little ones, different colors, all kinds. And let me tell you something. Now they called these people drunks. And I'm not going to preach much longer. But they called these people drunks. Now, Brother Hubert said he'd never seen anybody drunk that early in the morning. I nudged Brother Steve. I said, I have. <laughs> you know. But I want to tell you something. There's all kinds of drunks. If you've ever been around drunks, there's all kinds of drunks. There's some drunks, you just give them a couple drinks and they're ready to fight the world. They're 10 foot tall and bulletproof. They'll whip anybody. They don't care. They're just ready to go. They're just ready to fight anybody. And then there's those other people that you give them a little bit of booze and it works as such a downer to them. They just want to sit and cry and slobber and tell you how rough they got it. I never really cared for too much for those two groups. <laughs> But then you got those happy drunks. They just love everybody. They just love everybody. Even the people they're not supposed to love. That's when, they, that's when them mean drunks kick in. And then they all become the sad drunks. And, <laughs> am I right? Y'all, so some of them are looking like, I don't have a clue. And I'm like, yes, you do. <laughs> You're in the house of God. Don't lie about it. It's okay. It's all been forgiven. I'm pulling from memory, not present experience. But all of a sudden, you see, these people were drunk. And I don't believe that when they walked in there, Brother Richard, I don't believe they were throwing chairs. I don't believe they were sliding them down the bar. I don't think they was busting bottles over their head. I don't believe nobody had a knife. I don't believe anybody had. Well, these guys are drunk. How can you tell? They're busting up the furniture. They wasn't doing any of that. And I don't believe they were all sitting around in circles of crying and feeling sorry for themselves. I believe they was just hugging each other and having a big time. And oh, look how happy. And they saw they were, because the Holy Ghost makes you happy. And you want to know when you really get it? If you, now, now, come on now. Stay with me. You get the baptism of the Holy Ghost and you're depressed. Before you get to that door, you didn't get enough. You didn't get enough. If you got enough of it to where by the time you get home, you don't even know if you got it or not. Well, this is Pentecost. I was raised Pentecost. Let me just tell you how Pentecost used to be. Used to be Pentecost. We couldn't tell anybody they got the Holy Ghost. 
Somebody would get the Holy Ghost and they just know what they was doing. They was just getting the Holy Ghost, talking in tongues like a Chinaman. They was just, blah, blah, blah. and then we'd get done. We just kind of had to look at them and grin. Because they had to tell us they got it. They had to tell us they got it. Anybody remember those days where they had to tell us? And they didn't know what they got. And they would be confused because nobody told them. They'd say, did I get the Holy Ghost? And we'd go, well, what do you think? Did I get the Holy Ghost? What do you think? Why can't we just tell them? If you speak in tongues, that's the evidence of the Holy Ghost. It's not the evidence of a blessing. It's not the evidence of an initial blessing. It's the evidence of the infilling of the Holy Ghost. So if you speak in tongues, boom, there it is. Somebody says, did I get the Holy Ghost? Did you speak in tongues? Nope, then you didn't. Did you speak in tongues? Yeah, then you got it. Why can't we just tell them? That's what it is. That's the sign. When a baby is born and it starts crying, do we all just look at the baby and grin and go, and somebody says, was your baby born? We just go, well, you have to ask him. <laughs> Let him tell you. Oh, we can tell because it's scriptural, it's exciting, it's exuberant, and it's real today. It's real today. It's never lost its power. It's amazing. It's, it's amazing. And we need to realize, Sister Morris, if you'll come, we need to realize that we can have a Pentecostal experience, that it's not something that's gone by. It's not for days gone by. It's not for something that happened years ago. You can get it any place. We get locked into a tradition where we think we've got to sing a chorus, we've got to stand, we've got to invite you, and you've got to come here. Brother Ronnie, didn't your mother get it washing dishes or something? Out in the middle of nowhere, living out in the country. Stand there washing dishes. She was raised in another denomination, and your dad was Pentecostal through and through. I mean, you, you, you cut him, and little Pentecostal things start coming out of him. I mean, I mean, he was just ate up with this stuff. I mean, he, I never heard anybody in my life that could pray like he did or talk in tongues like he did. All right, your dad got it. Yeah. Never even drove the, he just drove the car, raised his hand. Mother-in-law was standing at the kitchen sink or somewhere in the kitchen washing her hand, doing dishes. Brother Danny Jones, who, who's dead and gone on to be with the Lord, he, he had such a heart condition that was so bad. They said, can you just bring a, a dish rag and ring it over him and call it baptism? I said, no, because the Bible says we've got to bury him. And they said, well, he's in such bad shape, they don't think we can do it. I said, we'll trust God. And we brought him up there and put him in this water and baptized him in Jesus' name. Nothing happened to him. He got out of the water. He come back. He come back to church. He was just a little bit old, short guy. Remember? And, and and he was in bad health. He was in his forties. And 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 he come in one day and he told me. He said. He said. You know what happened to me? He he come in the barber shop and I was cutting hair and he said. You know what happened to me a while ago? And he was just radiant. And I thought he was going to tell me he was going to get a new heart because he ended up dying during a heart transplant to, and went on. And I said, No. What happened, brother Danny? And he. He, he lived right there on Main Street across from Metters in that little old house and, and, and he worked on Model T's and stuff and he said, I was sanding my Model T. He said, I was sanding a car and he said, I just got to sing in one of them songs. He said that we sing at church and he said, something come all over me and he said, he, I said, really? And he said, yeah. He said, I just stopped sanding and I just stood there and he said, I started saying a bunch of stuff that I didn't even know what I was saying. He said, I just started speaking in other tongues and he said, the Holy Ghost he said, I got the Holy Ghost and he would come in here and I'll never forget the blessings aren't I just loved him man he's about this tall wasn't he and then he'd wear cowboy boots to church and he's a little short stocky guy and he was really all he could do is get here and when and I remember we'd sing that song every time we'd sing that song I'm going to take a trip on that good old gospel ship he'd stand up and I guess he'd been to the bars and cowboy dance and line dance because he'd get up and he'd start swinging his hand remember he'd start swinging his hand like he was doing a line dance and he'd get happy and shout before the Lord but he got the Holy Ghost in a garage. We get locked in. The reason we get locked in is because we become apostolic traditionalists. You can get the Holy Ghost anywhere, anytime. God wants to fill you up. If you don't get it here, get it driving down the road. Get it doing the dishes. Get it at home. Get it in the woods. Get it anywhere you want to. Just get it. Just get it. Because it's real. It's real. Well, I never rode a stagecoach. 
been nice. Been back in them cowboy days. Went out there and rode 10 mile an hour with that thing and screaming and hollering and windows down, the dust to flying, and choking and waiting on the bat and the guys to swoop down off of the ledge and rob you. We can look at that and say, remember when they did that? Remember when they did that? Remember when they did that? Let's tell our age for a minute. How many remember when they didn't have air conditioning cars? And they had the wings. We had the big wings on the windows and we would adjust the wings to blow the air on us. That was pretty cool. I don't know how it did without messing up our hair, but it did. <laughs> Didn't it? I'd have the windows rolled down. I'd drive 30 miles to see my wife. I'd have the windows rolled down because it was summertime, it was so hot. I'd stop about a mile from her house and make sure my hair was just right. <laughs> then I'd roll it. Cause I could sweat, Brother Jeff, for a mile, you know, because I wanted to look good when she got in the car with me. But you know what? We can have to sit here and wonder what it was like to be on the day of Pentecost. Wonder what it was like to ride a stagecoach. Wonder what it was like to do this or to do that. Remember what it was like to ride the Oregon Trail. Remember what it was like to be World War II. Remember what it was like to be in all these things. We don't have to do all of that because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the Holy Ghost that was poured out on the day of Pentecost is still being poured out today. Anybody that wants it can get it. If you don't want it, you don't have to worry. God's not going to sneak up on you and souse you with it. He's not going to get it to you in your sleep. When you go to sleep thinking, I don't believe that. I don't want it. I don't want nothing to do with it. Don't have to worry about it. You ain't going to get it. But whosoever will, if you're hungry and you want it, he will pour out his spirit because I believe it's real, don't you? Will you stand with me this morning? Do you believe it's real? Well, it's real. It's real. And I know 